This is a lesson on academic English and particularly how to present quotations. Now you know how to find bibliographical references, you know how to put them in the references section, you know that you have to avoid plagiarism, so you know how to cite and when to cite. Now I'm concerned with the technicalities of putting the actual quotations in your text. You can call them quotations or citations, both terms are ambiguous. Here we're going to call them quotations, it seems to be the general term in the literature. And basically it's about presenting someone else's words. I'm going to distinguish between four kinds, They're pretty obvious. Uh, the first, non-attributed, we'll see what that means in a minute. The introductory uh, quotations that come at the beginning of a of a chapter or perhaps the beginning of a book, then the normal ones, the in-text quotations and the indented quotations, which have different rules for presentation. So a non-attributed quotation is the term I'm using for uh, things that people say, but you don't have to say who said it. Uh, for example here, Addis Ababa, the name of the capital of Ethiopia is literally translated new flower. Okay, and everybody who can consult a, a dictionary or a bilingual dictionary will get this particular uh, translation. So you don't have to say where you got it from. Who, who, it's just there, okay? And you can put that in inverted commas. We'll see in a minute. It can be double or single. Here again, there's no such thing as a pure feminist. Uh, this is the kind of thing that people say when they say quote unquote. You know, I'm not using this term, I'm using it in the way other people use it. So it's a kind of quotation, but it doesn't have a reference because it comes from general knowledge. Just a few things on this. You'll notice that it can be double quotation marks, double inverted commas, okay, or single, depending on the the style sheet. And then in the American style sheets, you're going to have the closing punctuation, that full stop there or that period, inside the inverted comma. And uh, British uh, tends to use it this way, the other way around, close the inverted commas and then the, the, the period or full stop. Uh, personally, I've never been able to figure out the logic of doing that. But the Americans do it, and so bit by bit we're all starting to do it. Even me. Okay, so there you've got the difference, more or less. In all points concerning the presentation of quotations, check the style sheet. Check the style sheet that you're going to use, okay, and you'll find uh, explanations of what to do. For example, um, I've put on Moodle uh, a Chicago-based style sheet, the one used by John Benjamins, and it says the following quotations in the main text, that means the in-text uh, quotations, should be given in double quotation marks, that with, with two, etc. And then periods and commas should precede the closing quotation marks. That's exactly the thing that we saw back here. They want you to do this even though their publishing house is in Amsterdam. So the US-UK divide isn't absolute. And here's the MLA style sheet, actually a summary of it, because the, the MLA is a big book. Uh, so by the CMS here is the Chicago Manual of Style. That's a very big book too. So we're, we're dealing with excerpts from these, these enormous style sheets. Style sheets, these are guides as to how to write. Okay, so MLA uh, says you should underline or italicize words and letters referred to as words and letters. That makes some sense. So here we've got the recommendation. The term American Indian is inclusive of over 500 da 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 da. Okay, so to indicate that's a term, not just a bit of language that I'm using in a normal way, they're using italics, and italics are the same thing as underlining. These days we have uh, computers, uh, we can, it's easy to do italics. And then the same thing if you've got non-English words or terms, uh, as, as you can see here. 
Uh, for what is not English, use the italics um, to indicate that it has a special status. Underlining again is the same as the italics. All right, so for all these minor points, check the style sheet you're going to use in your particular piece of writing. The most important thing is that some style sheets say you should use single quotation marks for the non-attributed quotations, and then double quotation marks, that's a mistake there, not quotation, get rid of that S, double quotation marks for attributed ones. So you'll find something like this. There is no such thing as a correct translation. Here, correct in inverted commas, non-attributed. Since, and here we have a quotation, that is attributed, double inverted commas, every translation admits alternatives, author, date, page, close of punctuation. Okay, so here, this is not all um, style sheets do this, but, but some do. Uh, they make a distinction between the non-attributed, which is single, and the attributed, which is double. I move on now to introductory quotations, and here's an example. It's the beginning of a chapter of a book, actually a book I wrote some time ago, and the style sheet here wanted single, uh, inverted commas, you can see, and there are basically no rules for this. You, you do whatever looks pretty, uh, although you must give the reference, as I've done there. Okay, uh, whether it should be in italics or not, it's up to you. These things sort of escape the the control of the style sheets. Make it look good, make it look attractive. For the work you're doing, don't overuse this. Uh, you know, this is this this I did once, right in the middle of a book that I think's about I don't know three hundred pages long. So I just did it in one chapter to mark a, a major division between two great periods of Spanish history if you like, uh, before the uh, encounter with the Americas and after. after um, okay, nothing else to say there. Let's move on. Let's go to the in-text quotations. These are the ones that are in your main writing without a special paragraph for them. Now, in the work you're doing, I just stress this, because some people seem to think if you get some really good quotations, and just put them down one after the other, you're doing very well. Well, yes, you have done some research and you can show those quotations, but when you're presenting your work, you have to string them together. You have to make them speak to each other. You need your frame, and uh, the frame can be as complicated and complex as you like. Here are some minimal type framings, but you will need them. You can't just put quotation, quotation, quotation. Okay, so according to Smith, and then we've got the reference, comma, every translation of its alternatives, close, full stop. Americans would want the full stop close, but we know this. As Smith reminds us, every translation of its alternatives, here the reference mark has come after the actual quotation, and that's fine too. There seems to be a tendency to put the quotation next to the author, uh, these days, but you can still find people doing this, and it makes perfect sense. We can figure out that Smith goes with 1995. Not everyone agrees that every translation of its alternatives. Hmm, not good. I would want Smith there, sorry. It was Smith, 1995-17. Ooh, I have to mix that up. Smith, because we know uh, that that comes from Smith, and we have to tell them. Well, okay, well, I'll do that later. Okay, and then every translation claims Smith admits alternatives. Now, this last one is what you find in novels or narrative, okay, where you get the the authorship inserted or into the actual uh, quotation. Academic English would tend not to use that, but it's one of the resources you've got if you want to make it lively or read like a novel perhaps. Okay, so it's it's not sort of normal, but it, it can happen, and it's a resource available to you. Other frames. Here we have something literary. 
Eliot's striking imagery implies that Prufrock has no more power than a patient etherized upon a table. So we're referring to the poem, The Love Song of Alfred J. Prufrock. And this is a citation. It's a line from the poem. If I remember correctly, let us go then you and I to where the sun lies flat against the sky like a patient or etherized upon a table. Okay. And that's just put in as part of the sentence, okay? Here is quite the opposite. It's also a literary uh, citation. You can see they're using MLA uh, referencing systems here. Uh, Chi Chan, the narrator of a child in prison camp, acknowledges the alienation of being a child as she watches her father pack. Colon, and then you've got the, the quotation. Here, the punctuation comes after the referencing, okay, in both cases, and this is MLA. All right, so here it's it's just part of the prose. It follows on. It's part of the syntax. Here you've got a colon disrupting the syntax. There's one syntactic unit for the frame and another syntactic unit for the quotation itself. Both are correct and quite common. Don't be boring. You can mix it up. You can use different verbs for your framing. As Smith says, claims, indicates, proclaims, posits, advances, explains, suggests, complains. Think about it. Think what you're using these uh, quotations for. Think how you can make them speak to each other and speak to your problem. And uh, be creative. You know, says you can have states, observes. You know, there are many, many, many more uh, there. Uh, Feel free to think about it and be creative. Uh, of course, texts are always in the present tense, as you can see there, and as we learnt in a prior lesson. Now, I move on to indented quotations. These are ones that are not in the train of your text. They are longer quotations, and they are set apart uh, from the paragraph. Each style sheet has a different number of words or lines. It could be uh, more than three lines in your quotation, or more than four lines, or a certain number of words. Then you use indents. Okay? Indented uh, quotations do not have inverted commas. In-text ones do. Okay? In the uh, reading that you've got for this, this part of the course, it's a very old book. I don't know who put it there, but I've put it there because it's been used in previous years. They say, use five spaces. That was written for typewriters, folks. Uh, we use computers. If you're doing the indent, use the tabs to do it. Okay. Oh, look, I'm going to show you what a tab is. Just don't do this at home, kids. It's very dangerous. Here you go. Here's an indented citation, right? And... They'll tell you where to put the tabs, but there it is. I can move it that way or that way, okay, and I can fix how far it goes. If it's one centimeter, there you go. I've got a one centimeter citation. Do the tabs like that, okay? Do not go around putting it ba 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 ba. Oh, I'll do it, Daddy. Ba 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 like that. Spaces. No, that we used to do with typewriters. It messes up all the text when you want to move it from one place to another. Don't do it. Please do the tabs, and if you're really clever, use these electronic styles up here to get one that works automatically for indented uh, quotations. Now back to the action, if I could find this PowerPoint, there we go. Okay. Uh, the Chicago-based style sheet that I have says it should be, they should be indented without quotation marks with the appropriate reference set off from the main text by a line of space above and below. So it looks like, whoa. Okay, it looks like the thing we just saw, actually. And the other difference is this. In the in-text quotation, the punctuation comes after the reference. Okay, here's the example we saw, and the punctuation is there, okay, after the close of that uh, reference there. In the indented quotation, the punctuation comes before. So it would have 
long, 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 long citation, finishing, admits alternatives, full stop, period, that's it, and then in brackets, give the reference, Smith, 1995, 17, and nothing there, okay? The punctuation goes with the quotation. This is the difference. This is in-text, this is indented. So here's another example of an indented uh, quotation. Just a few things here. Um, well, you can see the indent. Just a few, and you can see that the full stop goes there. And then I've used a cap. You, you could use a lowercase, but it's sort of correct to use a capital because you've got that full stop. So you're opening it there. Uh, some other things to note. The sick here, it's because that's an unusual spelling of squire. It's usually S-Q-U-I-R-E. This man's name was I-E-R. I actually had to go and check it. And so I put the sick, the thus, really. Yes, I haven't made a mistake, folks. It really is like that. Okay, here's the frame. I've got uh, a colon here to introduce the, uh, the quotation. The baptizing of volcanoes is a practice dating dot, 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 to the Hispanic conquest. And I've added an explanation with square brackets here of the Americas. I've put that in, so it's in square brackets. We're going to see that in a minute. Okay, there we go. That's an interesting story, actually, about the, the volcano in Nicaragua, which was not baptized and main remains for Ruben Dario, who wrote the poem on this, a symbol of resistance against European colonization. I invite you to go off and reread Dario. Let's see. Square brackets uh, have quite a few functions. That's one of them there. Okay, let's go through them. Um, square brackets is a normal term. In the United Kingdom, we talk about normal brackets or round brackets, but a bracket is a, usually round, and then they're opposed to square brackets. The United States, they talk about parentheses for the normal round brackets, and then sometimes use brackets to mean square brackets. So you can have square or not, or crotchets, which is the other name. That's like what you say in Spanish, okay? But we're talking about the, the square things that we're going to see in a minute. Okay, uh, the Chicago Manual says that interventions... Uh, such as sick, the one we saw, or interpolated comments, need to be signaled by the use of square brackets. Ellipsis points, these are the three dots when you've taken something out, also need to be bracketed, okay, from the Chicago Manual of Style, paragraph, and there's the, the reference. Let's see the functions. Square brackets can be used to modify a quotation so that it fits in with the syntax of, uh, of your sentence. So here's the original. Once again, same thing. The It's proof rock. What is it? I grow old, I grow old, I shall wear the bottoms of my trousers rolled. Okay. Commentary. Proof rock muses that he will wear the bottoms of, ah, his trousers. Okay. Not my trousers, which is in the original. We've adjusted the syntax for pronoun agreement. And that is in inverted commas. Don't put it in red. I've put it in red so that I can see it here. All you need are the inverted commas. Other adjustments for capitalization. Okay, so the original is, to enter a book is to live in another place. Capital letter, it's a sentence. When Skoll says that to enter a book is to live in another place, you see, I don't need a capital there, so I've made that original capital into a lowercase. And to indicate that I did it and he didn't, it's in square brackets. Okay, once again, don't use the red. I put it there so that we can see it. Some style sheets do not require that. They're quite happy with a capital letter there. In fact, the place I took this example from had a capital letter. Personally, I think it makes sense to use the square brackets and adjust the capitalization. Sometimes the square brackets are there to indicate that uh, a, a, an unusual spelling or indeed a mistake in the, in the uh, quotation uh, is not your mistake. 
Okay, so this sick really is from the Constitution of the United States, which uses the archaic spelling of choose, and we indicate that in square brackets. Explanations can be inserted into the text with square brackets. The president stated he will not sign the bill they, and then Republican members of the House. You can see this is the actually journalist inserting a commentary here, or the, 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 the critic. So you can insert comments with square brackets. The square brackets indicate this is your voice, your editorial voice, uh, to be distinguished from, from the voice here of the president. You can also give explanations that are translations. I seldom spoke in French class. When I did, I usually just said, je ne sais pas, square brackets, I don't know. So the original did not have the translation. You've put the translation in, so it has those square brackets. Sometimes you delete material. We saw uh, an example of, of that. Here, here's another one. Um, actually, it's, a, it's from the Spanish. Uh, it's about the original conquest of Mexico and the Franciscan friars learning the uh, learning Nahuatl, I suppose. We don't know quite what language they were learning at that stage. And to learn it, they had to play with the children. And so the children gave them the language and uh, they used the language to bring down the empire. Okay, so we've got uh, the account here, which literal translation is this, the, the friars had to play with the children to the point where they needed to joke with the children and become children with the children. Okay, uh, when I use that as a quotation, I wanted to simplify it. So the friars played to the point where they needed to become children with the children. Okay, I've taken out the, uh, what have I taken out? Joke with the children because burla, I'm not too sure exactly what they mean there. I think it means joking around or something, but it wasn't important in the context. So I took out that phrase and I've indicated that it's been omitted uh, using the square brackets and those three dots. The... Uh, this you can see in the Chicago style sheet, uh, where it's indicated exactly that you should do what we just done there. Finally, when you give these quotations, you can indicate emphasis, things that are important to you, that you want to look at. So part of that same book that actually dealt with the whole history of, uh, of Hispanic cultures, uh, one of the chapters is on the Olympic Games in Barcelona in 1992, and I was talking about the nationalism of them. So here we go. It's clear in Article 60 by Law 1. Okay. Colon. Here I'm using single uh, uh, quotation marks. It could be double in others. And I want to emphasize that they use the phrase, the language of the co host country. And then the other law, this is of the Olympic International Olympic Committee, the language of the host country. And I've underlined that, or put it in italics twice, and I've indicated italics ours. It could be italics mine, or emphasis mine, or my emphasis. There are many ways of doing that. Uh, of course, the interest is that uh, the Olympic Games, are uh, the candidacy is presented by a city. Uh, that was the city of Barcelona. Uh, but the statutes of the Olympic Committee talk about the language of the country, and so they interpreted country as being Spanish. What is a country, though? We did have, in fact, Catalan as one of the co-official languages in the Olympic Games. Sometimes, of course, the actual quotation has emphasis already, and you have to indicate that the emphasis is in the text and not yours. So here's another uh, indented citation, a quotation from the same text, and I've put here italics in the text to indicate that I haven't put in these terms. Okay, and you can see some other things here, some uses of square brackets. 
uh, here it's a, a review of a, a book of uh, of poetry by a guy called Maristani, who lived uh, around Sitges. Anyway, um, a lyrical verse at the a time of war in Europe. So I've inserted the note 1914 to indicate which war we're talking about, at least. And then self-sacrificing author. I'm translating that from abnegado autor. Abnegado could mean many other things. So I've put in the original Spanish there, here in inverted commas, okay, because that's my voice putting it in. But neutrality, that one there, that I, the italics there, are in the text and not my uh, intervention. Okay, so you've got to be care. Just make it clear to the reader who is doing what there, which voice is yours, which belongs to the quotations, and that indeed is the entire function of the quotations, of attributing voice in your text. <laughs>